going to try this. Uh, of course, right as the lawnmower comes by, it makes an atrocious amount of noise. We're going to try this. Uh, try this out. This is a faucet, electric pump. Came on. Uh, supposed, supposedly came on um, mid '80s uh, generator sets. It's like a five psi pump. So if if you if you look at yours, it'll say listed 574A. But the model number for these pumps is actually printed on the plate on this side, and it's kind of difficult to see, but it says 40133. So that's the actual model of the pump. This is just like a UL listing sticker here. So when you get the pump off, there's two 10 millimeter or 3 8 bolts that you have to take out. Be careful when you take them out that they don't fall down into the uh, generator pan and you lose them forever. So especially with the back one, careful. And then this will be on. Find a pair of technology demonstrators. So I'll, I'm going to install this, how it is when you take it off. It'll be on like that. You take your adjustable wrenches, open them up quite a ways, and make sure you only grab the bottom part of it so you don't mess up with the pins or anything. And then just give it a twist and it'll come off. Now, I bought the, or I got the rebuild kit. There's the kit number. Okay. I got that and it came with uh, it came with a couple things. It came with a filter that seemed to indicate it wasn't for my pump, only pumps that already had a filter. But I'm going to show you how that's not true. You can just put it on the pump, it'll work. And so when you take it off, now this is the rebuild gasket. It's in good shape, but yours will probably be all chowdered up around the outside edge. So you want to take it out. Just a big flat rubber gasket. And then this is a magnet. So you want, if there's any crap on there, you want to clean it out. So your pump may not have come with a filter, so you'll take the, you'll take the filter and stick it in there before final reassembly. Let's go get the interesting parts. Where are those interesting parts? You might see something like this on the top of your plunger. We'll go over that in a second. Don't worry, I'll show you the whole assembly here. Now the way this pump works is pretty simple. This is an electromagnetic a magnet that's sealed in here, inside this midsection of the pump. And when it engages, it, it shuttles this piece back and forth. Um, so this, this plunger travels up and down. And probably what it is, is it electromagnetic engages, which pulls the plunger down, compressing the spring, and then it releases, which lets the plunger go. So that shuttles that plunger back and forth to create pressure inside the pump. It's just a smooth bore doesn't have a rings or anything. So when you first disassemble this, this plunger is going to be inside here. Then there's a little poppet. And you notice there was a little poppet on the um, other end of the spring. And then there's a, a washer. And just push all that in there. And if you do it right, that Viton gasket, yours will have a brown rubber gasket. I'm using just a soft pair of, see this is tricky. It'll, it'll want to pop out on you. So you just take this and you put it over the end, trade hands, slide it down. And again, I'm still having trouble here. Sorry for going off camera there. It's a fairly easy pump to assemble and 
and disassemble. One side will pop in there. This side will pop in here. That's it. Oh, didn't quite do it. You got to make sure that when you pop it in that that ring is compressed. So all this does is stop the whole mechanism from popping out. So it's pretty important. So what happens is this valve allows fuel to go in as the plunger is compressed. And then when the electromagnetic turns off and the plunger returns to its rest position, it sucks gas through here. And uh, then when it compresses it again, pushing the plunger down towards the bottom of the pump, towards this end, there's another poppet on the other side that allows the gas to go up. So there's just two poppet valves in the same direction. So if I gently depress this, you'll see that it... And these seem to last forever. But when you first disassemble this, besides this rubber ring being all shot here, what does not come in the rebuild kit are two pieces. One might not be so important, so you'll just... Usually when you take this off, do you see how that's stuck on there and it's not springing out at me? That might happen to you, or this whole thing may just go boom and launch towards you, so be careful of that. You will not have this Viton ring, but you'll need to pick one up from a Napa or AutoZone, O'Reilly's, whatever. Because yours will be a black rubber O-ring that's just shot. You'll need to replace that. It doesn't come in the rebuild kit. So then you'll take this out, and what you'll notice at the top, and it may be disintegrated and gone, is there is a formed gasket that sits underneath this lip that goes around the outside edge. And all I can figure is it helps the mechanism of the pump. It acts like a one-way poppet valve, essentially, or maybe some kind of check valve. Although the poppets act as a check valve, right? Because you can't push fuel down here. The poppet valve will close. So what I'm thinking is you've got a poppet valve here and a poppet valve here, and then this sort of, like, crappy... I'll simulate it with this. This is a uh, common flat washer sliced in half. The number on it is one quarter, so quarter inch, I don't know. And conceivably you could pop this over there, but it would only last about a month before it disintegrated because it's just common rubber. And like I said in the rebuild kit, they don't supply you with this washer and they don't supply you with the O-ring. So apparently the washer is not necessary is all I came to the conclusion of. It's not on the blown up diagram for this pump. So maybe in later models they just didn't even include it because it wasn't important. But that washer can disintegrate and end up in your filter, possibly end up in your carb. If you don't have a filter after the pump, you should have a filter after the pump. And yeah, you can see it's a little bit of light scoring on here where this, you know, it's been used quite a bit. Um, so what you need is you need this Viton O-ring. So let's get your measurement on that. I'm going to give you in millimeters. So I'd say 16 millimeters. Let's see the size of the opening. Should be able to get that. 15 and 15 and a half millimeters, the opening. And then the thickness of the Viton is 2.5 millimeters. So you need a an O-ring that's about 16 millimeters. On the outside di uh, diameter and um, 2.5 millimeters thick. It's Viton, it's resistant to fuel. So when you rebuild this you're gonna make sure all that crap's cleaned out from inside there of what remains of the gasket they have in there. And then you're just gonna put the plunger in. Stick your poppet valve on top of the spring. 
get your Viton ring, get your little washer, and take your Now they sell an electronically controlled version of this pump that has some kind of Hall effect sensor or whatever instead of an electromechanical relay in it. And uh, so it'll probably last longer out in the field. But that pump's $100. So unless you want to spend $100 for a pump. So I already screwed it up. Let's see. Let pull these out. And... Come on. Got to make sure that this is down far enough. Don't want to damage the poppet valve. Okay, I got one underneath. That's why I'm using these soft nose tweezers. Don't use pointy ones, you'll poke a hole right through something you need. Sorry about going off camera. This is, my, this is a new camera setup for me, so. There you go. And that retention clip should hold that whole mechanism together. Doesn't have to hold it together much, just a tiny bit. So that's your rebuild. And then you put your new washer in there from the rebuild kit. And oh, before I finish, it comes with a it comes with a screen. I think it's a 40 micron screen. And it just goes in there like that. It won't interfere with the mechanism or anything. It works fine. And then you just put your bottom on. Now this is broken off because I was utilizing a different washing material that didn't compress as much. So I had to over tighten it and I sheared that hex right off. So if you have done the same because of age and quality of the bond, then just grab it like this and it's fine. And there you go. Pump's rebuilt. Uh, so you can test it. Clipping the ground on here. Uh, this is your positive, your inlet is on the bottom, and your output's on the top. 